Hi, my name is Chris Cox and I'm a thoracic radiologist and I'm going to be talking with you today about consolidations. This is within the larger framework of the diffuse lung disease uh, section of the cases that you're going to be given during your rotation. But I thought this was a, a good topic to focus on specifically. So when you're interpreting a radiology study, I want you to do first differentiate, is this normal or abnormal? Once you've decided that it's abnormal, I want you to do one of three, I want you to do three things. Localize, where is this abnormality? Characterize, what are the qualities of this abnormality? And then contextualize, what is the broader picture uh, that this is happening within? All right, localize, characterize, contextualize. So with that, I'd like to uh, show you a few cases of pulmonary consolidation. The first case is a 25-year-old uh, female who presents with a couple days of developing cough and fever. Looking at the chest radiograph, you might recognize the left lung looks relatively normal. But on the right side, as we approach the right hemidiaphragm, we've got this poorly defined increased opacity. So I am localizing it to the right lower thorax. Now there are structures throughout this area that I've got to think about. I've got to think about the overlying uh, breast tissue, the ribs and chest wall, the uh, lungs, the pleural space, the potentially part of the, uh, the heart. So we've got several uh, anatomic uh, structures in this area. But with that, uh, this is kind of patchy and throughout the uh, expected area of the lung. Also, I'm losing my right hemidiaphragm. This is called the silhouette sign. When two objects of equal density are against each other, you lose the border between it, and that's called the silhouette sign. So I know that part of this opacity is up against the hemidiaphragm at the dome of the diaphragm, and that's a classic location for the left, uh, the right lower lobe. If I look at the lateral exam, I see that consolidation uh, approaching the hemidiaphragm anteriorly, and posteriorly I see uh, an increased opacity. How do I know that there's an increased opacity here? Well, generally the thoracic spine goes from increased in density to decreased in density as it goes from cranial to caudal. This is because of the overlying soft tissues of the shoulders and the upper chest and the narrower lungs and the mediastinal structures. By the time you get down to the lower uh, thorax, it's primarily only lung overlying the spine. If it increases in density, then that tells you you've got some sort of process uh, and opacification in that lower uh, thorax. So that's the spine sign. So I've localized it to the right lower lobe, and now I'm going to characterize it. It is patchy. I've got airways passing through it with some branching uh, air-filled components, which we call air bronchograms. And on the lateral, I see that it approaches the, the fissure and stops at the oblique fissure. These are all classic qualities of consolidation. Then I put it into the uh, context. This is an acute presentation. In general, my differential for acute consolidation is going to be HEAP, hemorrhage, edema, alveolar proteinosis, and pneumonia. This is a focal consolidation in a younger patient presenting with fever and cough. This is consistent with a community-acquired pneumonia. Now let's take a look at another case of an older gentleman presenting with shortness of breath. We know that he's in significant respiratory distress because they've intubated the patient. Endotracheal tube in place, approximately five centimeters from the carina, so well positioned. We look at the lungs and we've got poor visualization of the uh, central pulmonary vasculature. And we've got 
kind of accentuation of the vessels or the airways passing through this or kind of central air bronchograms. So I've got a parahylar distribution of disease. Then I look out in the periphery of the lungs and I see these very thin white lines out in the periphery. We call these curly B lines. And what they are is this thickening of the interstitium of the lung. So the combination of consolidation, particularly parahylar consolidation with peripheral interstitial thickening uh, in the acute setting, statistically, far and away, is going to be pulmonary edema. There are five things that I look for for pulmonary edema, particularly cardiogenic pulmonary edema. That's going to be cardiomegaly, vascular redistribution, where the pulmonary vessels are uh, overcoming gravity and, and distending in the superior lung. Consolidation, either parahylar or bivasilar, interstitial thickening, and pleural effusions. Those are the five findings that I look for in cardiogenic pulmonary edema. But here I want you to remember the combination of consolidation and interstitial thickening is very characteristic of pulmonary edema. And in this clinical setting, that would be my leading differential. Atypical infection could have this appearance. I'd like to show you one more case of a patient that presented with this chest x-ray and prolonged cough, 82-year-old uh, patient. And out in the periphery of the lung, we see this uh, increased opacity of the right upper lobe. With it, we see some air bronchograms passing through it. And it looks like it adheres to the uh, horizontal and oblique fissure. So this is a classic appearance of a consolidation. But for this patient, uh, who had this chest x-ray obtained in 2009, we have a follow-up chest CT from two years later. And here we've got a very similar look to this consolidation. And this is just a sampling of this patient's multiple studies from the chest x-ray uh, throughout their care. And the point here is that this is a chronic consolidation. Air bronchograms, uh, it has all the characteristics of a consolidation, but it didn't go away. So after six weeks, a consolidation is then considered chronic. And my differential changes, uh, the primary differential here would be organizing pneumonia, bronchogenic carcinoma, particularly uh, adenocarcinoma with uh, mucinous uh, features, lipoid pneumonia, lymphoma, and sarcoidosis. This patient actually ended up having a mucinous adenocarcinoma that progressed over time. So those are uh, three cases of consolidation that I wanted to walk you through, as well as considerations for differentiating uh, the types of consolidation. Thank you very much.